Your love is devoted Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Like a covenant of old Your love is enduring Through the winter rain And beyond the horizon With mercy for today Faithful you have been and faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and it's why i see jesus jesus you make the darkness tremble jesus jesus you silence me jesus jesus you make the darkness tremble jesus jesus peace bring it all to peace the storm surrounding me let it break at your name still call the sea to still rage in me to still Jesus, Gentleness that's 
is the path of peace. Turn thy striving into works of grace. Breath of God, show Christ in all I do. for my hand Found me in the dust My soul had given up But you wouldn't leave me undone Rebuilder My walls are cold Restorer, you brought the light into the room. Fill my lungs so I can learn to breathe again. My shelter, my warmth in the coldest night, and my helper, you held me up till I can stand on the promise that you are. Rebuilding me And I have seen the dawn Start to break between the cracks The beginnings of the day I 
never thought would come to pass But you brought me back to life For the morning in my night Rebuilder My walls are crumbling Restorer You brought the light into the room you filled my lungs so I can learn to breathe again My shelter my warmth in the coldest night and my helper you held me up till i can't stand on the promise that you are rebuilding me to the man i am today with all my fear and shame you rescued my heart and showed me that joy can come through pain you brought dance into these streets, my second chance for peace. Rebuilder, my walls are crumbling. Restorer, you brought the light into the room. Fill my lungs so I can learn to breathe. My shelter, my warmth in the cold is hiding. My helper, you held me up till I can stand on the promise that you are rebuilding me. The promise that you are rebuilding me. Promise that you are rebuilding me. Thank you very much. We want to welcome each and every one of you here today. Uh, a couple of just details as far as preparation. If you haven't got a program, Heather was so kind to pass them out. I appreciate that, Heather. But they are back there on the table there with some hand sanitizer. Um, also, if if you need to use the bathroom, we do ask that the, the, the door is open in the main entrance. We do ask you to wear a mask going in just to be mindful of others as you do need to use the restroom. It is open and available over there. Um, but we're excited to be able to gather with you. I am just so overjoyed at seeing your faces. This is an opportunity to testify of not ourselves, but God's greatness. And through illness, through loss, through sharing the hope that we have to other people, whether it's our neighbors or our friends or a random stranger, it is vital to hear from the body, from others who are struggling or have struggled, continue to struggle, that we bear each other's burdens and we continue to point each other to the hope that we have in Christ by testifying, testifying in our weakness, testifying in our strength in our whole lives, and we declare that. So we're overjoyed to have the willingness of three participants tonight. We got, uh, we got uh, Jesse Selness. He's going to come and introduce himself here in just a minute. I'm going to invite you up in one second, Jesse. But uh, Jesse is um, just an incredible story as to where God has brought him to now, and it's by God's grace. Then we have, we have Tammy Ward, who's going to be sharing. Um, since the loss of her husband, Craig, uh, back in March and to where she is now, what God has been doing in and through her life. Um, and then also we have Salem Hatushimanana. Is that right, Salem? Is that close enough? Where are you? I hope you're here. All right, there you are. Is that close enough? No, it's not even close. I thought I'd give it a shot than just not saying it at all. But uh, we got Salem here. He's going to close things off. And what the wonderful thing is with each of these testimonies, we've got songs that are tied in and connected with their testimonies and the power of what God has done in and through their lives through song. Before we invite Jesse to come up, we're going to just join in singing. So grab your programs. And on the back of the programs, you'll see songs that we are going to sing together. The first song is going to be Life Defined. So I'm going to ask the worship band that's going to be participating up here to come up. And um, if you'd like to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit. If you want to kneel, you can kneel, whatever you want to do. Um, but worship with us. Sing these words. They're on the back. 
Uh, and we're going to sing together. And then we're going to look forward to, uh, to Jesse coming up and sharing his heart with us. Uh, so let's sing together. I'm just going to start with the chorus, All I Am, My Life Defined. And all I am, my life defined by I've been crucified with Christ. In the life I live, I live by faith in Jesus Christ who lives in me. Be my life, oh, I surrender. One day is better with you than all the world. Oh, Spirit of life, help me remember that it is my pleasure to say to you that all I am, my life divine. By I've been crucified with Christ and the life I live, I live by faith in Jesus Christ who lives in me. My heart grows cold. When my heart grows cold and my flesh is failing, my spirit is willing to point me back to you. For to live is Christ and to die is better. So help me remember my song to you is all I am, my life divine. By I've been crucified with Christ in the life I live. I live by faith in Jesus Christ who lives in me. Let's remember what Christ has done for us and Him crucified. Remember his atoning, his body broken for me. Remember his approval, he gave his life to say so. is interceding. Remember if you had to breathe it out. To breathe it out and praise Him. And all I am, my life divine. By I've been crucified with Christ. And the life I live, I live by faith in Jesus Christ, who lives all I am. All I am, my life divine, I have been crucified in Christ, and the life I live, I live by faith. Jesus Christ, who lives in me. Amen. You can take a seat. I'm going to start us and open us in a word of prayer, and then I'm going to invite Jesse to come on up and give his testimony. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we can enter in your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise, and say this is the day you have made. 
we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I pray that our gladness be in the edification of one another tonight as we gather here and we know this is a public place being outside that we can sing and make music and melodies before you. And we have the freedom to do that. And we praise you that we have the freedom to do that. God, we want to honor you with the testimonies tonight. We want to honor you with these songs and the message that these songs are carrying forth. And Lord, I pray that every person that is here today would see and know that you are good in the midst of our circumstances. Whatever is happening that led us to, to be where we are today, whatever will happen in the future, whatever has happened in the past, God, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that we look and see that you are God, sovereign over all things, sovereign over all of the things that are happening in our world right now, but that we can come together as the body, our love for each other, our compassion, our care for each other, our desire to see each other walk in truth. Lord, that that would be the theme of our hearts as we gather here now and as we walk away and as we prepare for tomorrow's service. God, that you would be glorified, that you would be honored. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on up, Jesse. Come on behind me, Jesse. I just want to say, Jesse has been such a joy to my heart. Um, uh, you're going to hear more. And I'm going to stop talking in just a second, I promise. You're going to hear more from uh, his heart. And I, I actually read through his, his uh, he shared it with me ahead of time. And I was in tears because God has done so much through his life. And he's taught me so much through Jesse's life um, and our relationship as brothers in Christ. Um, He's a gifted drummer. He's got a lot of abilities that God's given him, but his heart to lead and teach and love people well, like Christ first loved him, is a beautiful thing. So I'm thankful that he's willing. He's been praying over this for a couple months, and he's willing to do it. I just kind of shoved him in the spotlight. No, I'm just kidding. He, he was willing. So praise God, and come on up and share your heart, Jesse. Yeah, thanks a lot for a chance to, to be up here and share this with you, Jeremy especially. Um, so yeah, my wife, Katie and I have been coming to Ebenezer about six years or so. I think it's about six years and our two boys, Connor and Evan, um, uh, tag along with us. So, um, we've really enjoyed being a part of the Ebenezer, uh, body. So, um, but yeah, Jeremy asked me to just share a little bit specifically kind of about a bit of a journey through, through illness that God has decided to take me and, and our family on. Um, so I want to just share some of those stages with you and a little bit about what I have learned at this point. And it's certainly not a, uh, an, a finished story, but um, I guess none of our faith journeys are, are finished stories yet. So, um, But th the first time that, that a health-related issue really came to the forefront in, in my life was back in 2008. Uh, some of you know this already, but... Um, at 2008, I was diagnosed with uh, MS, multiple sclerosis, and if if you know what that is, it's it's a disease of the um, where your immune system attacks your nervous system. Obviously, the nervous system is kind of important, um, and and it just can really show up in a lot of different ways uh, that uh, depending on where things are happening. So um, that was a very scary time, obvious obviously to say. Um, where, where suddenly this, this big thing came into life and, and, uh, you know, I had all the visions of, of what is, is going to potentially be, uh, happening to me in, in the life, uh, ahead, you know, the, the disability in the wheelchair and, and all that. I thought, I, I don't want that to happen with, you know, I want to be able to enjoy my kids and, and, uh, all the other things, drumming, those kind of things. Um, and. Honestly, so far, and it's been a while now, but the symptoms of, of MS have been really almost non-existent. Um, the Lord has been gracious in, in that those have not been progressing. Um, I get checked uh, every, every year for that, and, and that has been stable. Um, so it's kind of given me a, a, some solid footing to, to, get, to come to terms with that. Um, you know, there's there's still always a chance that that could change really even overnight. But uh, at this point, that's been something that has, has um, been stable. So um, the next chapter in my, my health saga would be 2011. 
um, completely unrelated to MS, uh, uh, some doctors found a, a, uh, a tumor in my pituitary um, in the brain. And if you're familiar with pituitary, of course, that's another important system that basically is control center for, for your endocrine system. All of your um, other glands and hormones are connected to that. So what that tumor does is it, it just sends this freak out system to the rest of, of the downstream endocrine system. So um, it was it was diagnosed as it's called Cushing's disease. And um, that was definitely a more impact than MS has been. And um, basically what ended up happening is things like um, I actually I gained about 100 pounds in the course of maybe six months. Um, it caused my my skin to, to uh, become thin. And so it was literally tearing open. And as I gained size and uh, blood pressure was, I, I think well, Katie told, reminded me it was like in the 230 over 190 at some points. Um, I had to write some of these things down <laughs> to remember. Oh, blood clots in my lungs, fluid in my lungs, um, weakness. My whole body was weak. I would go out to walk into a store and I would just kind of fall. Um, so, you know, just this whole list of things started going wrong. It just seemed like everything was was falling apart. And it literally was because of that, that Cushing's disease. Um, so it got to the point where the doctors felt like he's not going to make it much longer. We need to do some emergency surgery here, pretty much. Um, they said I wouldn't even survive a stress test to see if I was able to go into surgery. They just had to make it happen. So they tried to remove the tumor from the pituitary, um, long story short, that part was not successful. So they did the next best thing of re removing my adrenal glands. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, um, that, that stopped the, the whole process. Basically that was where the, the real damage was coming in because of the adrenal glands. So if I ever get scared or attacked by a bear, I'm usually pretty laid back about it because I don't have any <laughs> adrenaline to <laughs> contribute to the situation. So, <laughs> um, so I do have to take pills. I have them in my pocket at all times. If I miss that, um, you know, even for a few hours, it, it can be actually fatal um, because of the replacement that it's, that it's being. So um, that needless to say was, was a very difficult and dark time uh, for, for all of us. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm gonna kind of come back to that. Uh, I am happy to say again that, that uh, after that surgery, the symptoms really faded away and I'm just left with, you know, making sure I take my pills. And, um, you know, if, if something scares me, I need to have Katie get upset about it because I won't. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that was a, then there was a nice long stretch of, of things being pretty calm. You know, I was really even with both of those conditions, I was living life just just normally. Um, fast forward to 2020. We all know about the pandemic, um, COVID-19, and um, the Lord saw fit to allow that to come into our family. So um, Katie and I both were tested positive for that and, and we got pretty sick. Um, we didn't actually have to go to the hospital, but uh, there were definitely points uh, for, for both her and me. You know, I remember, especially during the night, there were points where I would be awake and I couldn't get my breath. I just couldn't, you know, I, I felt like I'm breathing, but it's not, it's not right. I'm, I'm not getting air, starting to even feel dizzy just laying in bed. Um, so it was it was a big deal, and it, for me, it actually ended up lasting, I don't know, eight nine weeks to kind of some recurring feelings. So um, that was another challenging time. Uh, thankfully, our boys stayed uh, healthy through that. Um, we we're very thankful for that, and, and Katie and I at this point are are doing good from that. So I kind of figured when I heard about COVID nineteen that I was positive. I was like, really. <laughs> I need one more thing to, to deal with. Um, well, God, God seems to still be keeping me on this journey of figuring out health things because in the process of being checked for, for COVID and, and making sure that was um, resolving, the doctors found a mass in my right lung that they don't know what it is. So 
Um, I had a biopsy of that this week, and I'm literally waiting to hear what that's going to mean. So, um, you know, I expect early this week we're going to find out what what the deal is with that. So, um, I I really f felt at, at various points like, um, God, what are you doing? I mean, there were some points where I felt his his hand, his strength, his peace. There were a lot of points I did not feel that. And um, even looking back, I, I still am scratching my head a little bit about some of why things went the way they did. I, I want to share with you some verses from a psalm that have really been um, helpful for me uh, in the last few weeks even. Uh, psalm 66 says, For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let my men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. So when I read those, I felt like I could really relate to the psalmist in, in, in those words. But then the next thing the psalmist says is, yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. And I've also experienced that. I feel like the, the years of peace, of, of calm, have been those years of abundance that, that God has made that much sweeter because of, of where we have been. Um, then, then he goes on and says, I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will perform my vows to you, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. And that really hit me because in the times of being really scared, including even right now where I'm waiting for biopsy results to come back, that's when all the, the words and thoughts of, oh, I trust you, Lord, not, not my will, but yours. I will do whatever you want. I'll be a missionary. <laughs> Anything that you promise in times of trouble, um, there comes a time where it's important to say when he brings us to a place of abundance, if he chooses that, that we, we deliver not deliver, that's not the right word, but just we remember that and we, we do go to his house and offer our praise and thanks to him. Um, so, you know, what I've learned, just a few things real quick, is um, one thing, we, and we hear a lot about this again with the pandemic, is people talk about the odds. And, you know, the odds of this happening are, are this and that. And for this age group, it's different. And I feel like I look at my life and I just, whenever I hear the word, the odds, I just throw it out the window because the things that have happened have been so unusual and in some cases unprecedented um, that, you know, doctors have said, we've never seen that before. And, and so I just feel like when we try to base our comfort and our, our security in the odds, those are going to fall apart so fast because that small number is always somebody, you know, it could be you, it could be me. Um, that's not the right place to place our confidence. Um, you know what I'm going to say next, the right place to put our confidence is in the Lord. Um, but things he's been teaching me about his sovereignty, um, I, I could go on for a long time talking about that. Uh, it's such a profound thing to consider his control. You know, one of the things he really put in my mind through some of this is just this image of, of his hands you know, we're, we're familiar with he'll stop the waves on the beach, right? He, he it comes this far and no further. So he won't allow us to be pushed or tested or tried beyond what he allows. But while that's happening, his other hand is stirring the waters. You know, he's, he's in control of the whole process. You know, he will stop it. He will make sure it doesn't go beyond where it should. But he also, like the psalm said, he's bringing those things into our lives or allowing them to happen, but fully in control of, of everything from start to finish. Um, he controls, and, and not just, he, he created, but he doesn't just create, he actively sustains all the stars. And, and down to every cell that's in my body right now, um, he is actively sustaining that, and, and he's in control of, of the whole process. It, it's just a, a staggering thing when you really start to think about it. Um, during that time, it, it wasn't hard for me, though, to admit that he was in control. It was almost like he was making that impossible to ignore, that he was controlling the situation. But what I did struggle with 
was, is he good? Okay, he's in control, but is that a good thing? And um, there were times, to be very honest with you, I, I concluded, I thought that it was not a good thing. It, it just seemed all the facts, all my ability to see what's going on seemed like he is not being good. This is, this is cruel. Um, and, and that's, that's still a journey that I'm, I'm on, but I feel like, uh, like the song Jeremy sang just before I came up of a rebuilder. I feel like my faith was torn down. He's rebuilding it into something, um, more pure and more sure. Um, and you know, just on looking back, I just, I realize it's his job to be sovereign. It's not mine to understand, uh, or control. Yeah, what he's calling me to is is just what the Bible says of loving him and loving others. And so any opportunity I have to do that, I feel like I'm able to do that more and to do it mindfully. So um, thanks. I, I probably went over my my time and I, I was trying not to do that, especially as the first one. But, um, you know, I, I just am really thankful for uh, my family and for for the Lord's hand in this. So what we're going to do next is the the group is going to come back up. We're going to do a song called Creation Song. And Jeremy let us pick uh, that song. So um, the reason I chose that is it just speaks of God's creation, um, his sovereignty over it. Uh, on those nights where I was really struggling to get my breath with COVID, I just felt the only peace came from just thinking about God creating the world. For whatever reason, that was simple and and sure and I, I that just really brought peace to my heart so um this is about uh his creation uh ending with our response of praise so thanks a lot himself in light as with a garment he spreads out the heavens walks on the wings of the wind he sends forth springs from the valleys they flow between the mountains birds of the air dwell by the waters lifting voices in song Singing glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. All praises and honor for its seasons, the sun knows it's setting, he looks at the earth and it trembles, he touches the mountains and they smoke, I will sing to the Lord all my life, I'll sing to the praises to my God, as long as I live, praises to the Lord all my soul. Singing glory, glory, glory to the land. All praises and honor forever. 
I'm going to give a little bit of a, and I'm going to give an invitation for Heather and Jen to come up as well to sing this next one. Um, I, I have to admit, I cheated a little bit with Tammy. I gave her two songs. Um, and that's kind of in reflection of, and I'm sorry, Jesse and Salam, I, I, I didn't mean to be uh, biased, but uh, being with Craig's passing and everything, there was a song that was connected with Craig's passing, and, and we will sing that after her testimony. Um, but beforehand, this is the song that she wanted to uh, to sing, and this is called Greater Things. And uh, that the, the words are, my life is built on your faithfulness. My hope is held in your promises. So I take each step with your confidence. Cause I am yours. You never fail. You never will. I'll trust your name for greater things. You will come through and you always do. I'll trust your name for greater things. My life is built on your faithfulness My hope is held in your promises I take each step with your confidence Cause I am yours And I am yours You never fail You I'll trust your name for greater things. You will come through. You always do. I'll trust your name for greater things. You cleared away in the wilderness. Brought me back from my brokenness. You took my shame and you buried it. What you've done, I won't forget. You never fail, you never will. I'll trust your name for greater things. I will not fear, for you are with me. I'll see this fight from the victory. No power of hell can stand against me. I've seen this fight from the victory. I will not fear that you are with me. Now see this fight from the victory. No power of hell can stand against me. Cause I've seen this fight from the victory. Oh, and you never fail, you never will. I'll trust your name for greater things. You will come through, you always do. I'll trust your name for greater things. You never. Come on up, Tammy.
as she's coming up to it's a blessing uh to hear what god is doing through her life in the midst of these trials and then the loss of her husband as well so thank you tammy for your willingness to come up and share so come on take the mic That's good. Thank you. Okay. So this is my comfort bear. And Craig always wore his Wookiee. So he's always with me. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Tammy Ward. And first, I'd like to thank the Lord for Ebenezer Bible Fellowship. And all of you, the pastors, the saints, who love and support me and care for me. It's where you can truly find and know what love is. Learn of the love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has for us, and that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate that love. The song Greater Things is a constant reminder of what the Lord does and has done for me in and throughout my life. My life is built on his faithfulness and his promises, which I hold on to built on the rock, on a strong foundation. He has never failed me, and he never will. He will never leave me nor forsake me. He carries me through, through it all, and he always does. I've had many battles, and he has been with me through them all, in which his victory prevails. I've had many battles. Oh, I read that. And his victory prevails. He's a good father. I'm never alone. I am loved and precious in his sight. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your peace and comfort. Telling my story is telling Jesus. I was raised in a church and accepted Jesus into my heart and life at eight years of age. My great aunt Lois took us to church every Sunday. I was involved in Sunday school, youth group, and even went to Twin Pines for weekend retreats as a child and young adult. However, I strayed away with my own life after graduating high school and lived a world, worldly, fleshly life as I see now. But I thought I had God in it because I knew him and prayed when I wanted to or remembered to or even remembered him. I lived a life in darkness on and off for years, drinking and using drugs, living in sin, thinking I was fitting in, living my life for me. It was all about me always knowing and feeling in part it wasn't me or who I was, and he knew better. In 1985, at age 19, I was involved in a horrific motorcycle accident, which almost ended my life. In fact, I died, and they said Medivac brought me back to life, but I know who did. He wasn't done with me yet. He had plans for me. That accident changed my life. I drew closer to God and loved and thanked him for so much for saving me but I was still too young and naive to know who I really needed to focus on at all times. Fast forward, the drugs disappeared without a problem, but the alcohol remained a constant on and off for years. Even through my marriage and two beautiful children, Jeremy and Hannah, although they were the joy of my life, I still struggled with alcohol and underlying conditions. Even with a family, I still felt alone at times, realizing after the fact that I still wasn't seeking Jesus first. He needed to be first and would give me the desires of my heart. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well, Matthew 6, 33. I am a recovering alcoholic. With a little over two years sober, it is only through the Lord and his grace and mercy that I stand here today. Time and time again, he has pulled me out of my wicked, wickedness, sickness, and darkness, and set me free. He rescued me each time, pulling me back to him. In one of my battles with what I called my demon, <clears throat> he rescued me and sent me to Teen Challenge Philadelphia, which is a faith-based drug and alcohol program for adult men and women who struggle with addiction. It's a discipleship program. This is what I needed, and God knew that. Being at Teen Challenge developed and grew my relationship with him on a much higher level than I would have done on my own. The light the good Lord put in me brightened when my relationship with him grew and became more intimate. 
Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. James 4, 8. I stayed at Teen Challenge after graduating the program and became a staff member, being part of Teen Challenge for five years. My testimony verse, which still stands with me today. So do not fear, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10. I am very thankful and grateful for that opportunity to develop and to develop and mature spiritually. I'm also very thankful for Ebenezer for supporting my financial supporting me financially to go and be a part of Teen Challenge for that first year. As a staff member, I first helped run the, uh, the thrift store and moved on to become the drug awareness coordinator. This entailed taking the students on various locations throughout the eastern side of PA and New Jersey, informing them of the program and telling how Jesus Christ changes lives, that he is the only one to truly set you free, free from everything, breaking those chains, any strongholds the devil holds on you. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed, John 8, 36. I love telling people about him and what he did for me and how he could help them if they just let him in. I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, Revelations 3.20. I was so filled with love and joy, the joy of the Lord, letting the Lord work through me to bring others to Christ, and all glory to God for that. A smile never left my face, and laughter was always in the air. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. One day while speaking with my son, he said to me, Mom, you're very wealthy. You love what you do. I was wowed and touched. I wanted to go on mission for the Lord. During my time at Teen Challenge, I was reintroduced to a very good friend of mine, Roger Hudak, who was my 10th grade English teacher. God helped me to help him restore his faith in Jesus Christ after the loss of his wife, Sandy. Another all glory to God moment. And I never thought... Roger would be helping me through the loss of my husband. After five years of Teen Challenge, my mission there came to an end, and I moved back to Bethlehem. I wanted to become very involved with my church, Ebenezer, just as I was involved with my Philly church. I was to start to celebrate recovery here. However, my eyes were taken off of Christ. The worldly desires entered again, and for whatever other excuses I could give, I picked up yet again and I was hiding it. Trying to help someone to sobriety who didn't want to be helped, having my attitude change, not staying in the word or as close to God as I should have been. Stepping out into the world and not keeping Jesus close to my heart made me literally fall flat on my face. One day I was running late for church and wasn't going to come, but I changed my mind and arrived late and that is where I met my husband, Craig Ward. He was sitting in my seat. Now, <laughs> I know people say there's no science church, assigned seats in church, but I've sat there for over seven years prior, or maybe even longer. I don't even know. But, and that was on June 8th, 2017. Our relationship bloomed. We both knew our meeting and our marriage was God ordained because three months later, we flew to Vegas and we were married. Craig wouldn't let the pastor marry us until he can answer his question, which was, how are you saved? The pastor did answer correctly, so he was able to marry us. And he answered faith, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, Ephesians 2.8, one of Craig's favorite verses. We had a wonderful life and a wonderful marriage. I had a God-fearing man, what I always wanted. God certainly blessed me. Craig felt the same way that God blessed him so much with me. Our life was going to be on fire for the Lord. And after Craig retired, we were headed on mission for the Lord. And in August of 2019, last summer, Craig found out he had cancer. And this is where my computer stopped. So it's all verbatim. The news totally changed our world. In the beginning, my faith was so strong, I believed God was going to heal him. He was going to use Craig to bring others to Christ through this. His healing will prove to those unbelievers that there is a God, and he does great things. 
he did restore his relationship with his stepdaughter who uh, there was a three-year breakup with no contact. However, God had other plans. And sometimes he says no. His thoughts and ways are higher than our thoughts and our ways. He took Craig home to be with him on March 21st, my daughter Hannah's birthday. So to help her to feel better with that devastating news on her birthday, I reminded her that her name, Hannah, means grace. And I looked it up, and it means favor and grace. So God had favor and grace on Craig and took him home where he belongs, not to suffer and be in pain or anything of the such. I am so blessed and grateful that I was able to be there with him. It was hard watching my husband fade away to nothing. But Craig was ready and he knew it. He said to me, you need to get that hospital bed here because in 24 to 48 hours, something's going down. And he was right because exactly 48 hours later, he went home to be with Jesus Christ. And I'm grateful for the time that God gave us both with Craig's uh, release from work, with my foot surgery. We had nothing but time to be together, which is different from my mother passing away, which was a shock to all of us. I didn't get to say goodbye to my mother. In Craig's, in Craig's life, I had time to be with him. And we were able to be together and to talk about what God was doing in our lives and where he was going to move us to and so on and so forth. Craig was worried about me because I wasn't accepting what was happening to him. I truly believe God was going to heal him, like I said, but he had other plans. He bought me a picture that said, uh, God closes one door and opens others. And I couldn't understand why he bought that picture for me for Christmas. But I know that God closed that door for me and Craig, but he's going to open it for me to do something else for him. So I need to make sure that I stay in the moment, stay close to God, and have my eyes and ears open for what he has in store for me next. And I look forward to hearing those same words that I know he said to Craig when he walked into heaven's gates, well done, my good and faithful servant. With the COVID virus um, happening at this time, it, it's been very difficult in a sense. It's also been rewarding to me in a way because it has given me a lot of time for reflection. And I can see God's hand in everything throughout the whole thing, throughout my whole life, really, but throughout this ordeal or trial that was set before Craig and I, and uh, he's always with me. And as I said, he never leaves me or forsakes me. And he will uphold me through what is in store for me next. And I thank him for that. And I thank him, and I thank all of you that I can always have you for your love and your support. When I graduated Teen Challenge, I gave myself away. That was my graduating song. Somebody's asked me, how could God give you such a good man and then take him away from you? And with the time I've had to reflect, I realized that, I mean, this could be my own thinking, but it's good for me. God didn't give Craig to me. He gave me to Craig because it wasn't about me. It was about Craig. So God used me in Craig's life to help him through finding out he had cancer, dealing with that, and bringing him home to Christ. To have a loving Christian wife, to love him the way that he deserved to be loved. Because as he said, meaning Craig, he didn't really know what love was until he found Christ and until he found Ebenezer and the church family he found here helped him to truly know what love is, and I know that as well.
I sort of lost my place on this paper. Um, but my faith is what holds me, and Jesus Christ is who sustained me through all of this. Without him, I really don't know where I'd be. If I didn't have my sobriety and I didn't have Jesus Christ, I might be laying there also. But I know God has plans for me. And I will keep praising him because he is in control and his will prevails. I am the daughter of a king who is not moved by the world. For my God is with me and goes before me. I do not fear, for I am his. And that verse goes with my testimony verse. Everything always seems to go together with God. I could use testimony verses from years ago, and they're still valid today within my life. He never changes. He's always the same. And he loves me so much. And he's given me so much and a wonderful husband who will always be with me in my heart until we meet again in heaven. I will hug Jesus first and then I will go to Craig. Jesus is all I have right now and he's all I need. And he will rebuild me the last song that Jeremy sang, well, the worship team sang, and it's a good song. And there's many songs out there that go along with my life and what God is doing in it and for it. God is in control now and forever, and his will prevails. I thank you all once again. And I'm just excited to see where God is going to take me next. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. We'll have the team come up and we'll sing, well done. When my pain is gone And all the worries of this world will fade away What will it be like When you call my name And in that moment when I see you face to face I'm waiting my whole life to hear you say well done, well done, my good and faithful one. Welcome to the place where you belong. Well done, well done, my beloved child. You have run the race and now you're home. Welcome to the place where you belong What will it be like To these tears will wash away Every broken thing will finally be made whole What will it be like When I come into your glory Standing in the presence of a love so beautiful My whole life, life to hear you day. Day. I will live my life to hear you say. Well done, well done, my good and faithful one. Welcome to the place where you belong. Well done, well done, my beloved child. Run the race and now you're home. Welcome to the place where you belong.
What will it be like when I hear that sound? And all of heaven's heaven's angels crying out, singing holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Singing holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. We're singing holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Oh, we're singing holy. Salam, come on up and share your heart with us. It was, it was on Monday, April 4th at 9 o'clock when I was about to receive a reality check about my life. And the person who gave me this reality check was a homeless lady named Lisa. She had with her only a book bag. I had looked out the window and saw her on the side of the highway with a poster asking for money. First, I went outside and gave her my New Testament Bible and asked her about her situation, and she asked about mine. It was a short exchange, so I went back inside and started to make her sandwiches. And um, I forced my little sister to come with me. The next time I went outside to speak with her and I brought her a Bible that had the Old and New Testament. We brought her the sandwiches and the bottled water. I gave her a federal Bible So, yeah, okay. Um, We conversed with her for a little while and before and before when we left to go inside, she said something that I hope to never forget. She said, thank you so much. You have given me hope. The first thing I saw her do while I'm inside was get her, get on her knees in the sidewalk and she started to read parts of the Bible. 
Um, and this was a biblical reference to John 4 when Jesus met the woman at the well. And we gave her water, but she was more thirsty for the word of God. And that surprised me. How that impacted me. While I was inside, I started to wonder why. Why was it important for this lady to get on her knees and read the Bible? I started to break down inside because of my immoral deeds were being brought to light. I wasn't able to sit down without thinking about Lisa. What she said and did kept crossing my mind. So I went to YouTube to find answers. And luckily enough, I came across Christian evangelists and Christian apologists who opened up my eyes about Christianity. Because of Lisa and the virus, I am more closer to God than I have ever been. And a biblical reference of Ephesians 8 through 9, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Another Bible verse that helped me out a lot was Romans 6, 23, for all have sinned and fallen short. Wait, no. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. And another one is Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I was so excited about my newfound excitement for Christianity that I started to talk to my neighbors and friends about it, both good and bad experiences. I talked to my neighbors about Jesus and um, they, for a week, they tried to avoid me, but that was, that was surprising. And I talked to my friends um, one of them was Muslim, the other was Catholic, and the other one was an atheist slash agnostic. Um, all of them now have Bibles, thanks to, thanks to Jesus, and uh, hopefully they may come to know Christ. And that's, that's my story. Good story, Salem. So thankful for you, brother. Your 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 courage to step out and share the hope of Christ. Um, you know, Salem has just graduated from high school right now. He's off to uh, NAC, uh, Northampton Community College, in the fall. Lord willing, whatever happens in the fall, um, we're we're praying for you, brother, and we're thankful for your example to just say, like, hey, I'm I'm stepping out there. I'm going to look for ways to show others the hope of Christ. So thank you, brother. Give us just another minute here. Got, got sound here, Dennis? All right, thank you. All right, so um, Salem selected this song, Testify by Need to Breathe. Give me your heart, give me your song, sing it with all your might. Come to the fountain and you can be satisfied. There is a peace, there is a love you can get lost inside. Come to the fountain and let me hear you testify. Into the wild canyons of youth, all oh, there is love to fall into. Weightless will dance, kids on the moon. Oh, I will give myself to you. As soon as you start to let go, give me your heart, give me your soul, sing it with all your mind. Come to the fountain and you can be satisfied. There is a peace, there is a love, you can get lost inside. Come to the fountain and let me hear you testify. Wave after wave, steep calls too deep. Oh, I'll reveal my mystery. As soon as you start to let go, give me your heart, give me your song, sing it with all your mind. Come to the fountain and you can be satisfied. 
must cry. There is a peace, there is a love, you can get lost inside. Come to the fountain and let me hear you testify. Mist on the mountain, rising from the ground. There's no denying beauty makes a sound. We can't escape it. There's no way to doubt. Mist on the mountain rising all around. It's rising all around. Give me your heart, give me your song, sing it with all your mind. Come to the fountain and you can be satisfied. There is a peace, there is a love, you can get lost inside. Come to the fountain and let me hear you testify. Give me your heart, give me your song, sing it with all your mind. Come to the fountain and you can be satisfied. And there is a peace, there is a love, you can get lost inside. Come to the fountain and let me hear you testify. All right. So we're going to conclude. Um, so if you want to look on the back of your program, you'll see the next song, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. There's no way, better way to conclude our night together, our fellowship together with one another, that, that we continue to demonstrate, not myself, but through Christ, demonstrated through me in my words and my actions and the things that I do. Are they representative of Jesus Christ and Christ alone? So look on the back of your programs and we'll sing together. You're welcome to stand if you like and stretch out. You're welcome to sit or just stay seated, whatever you feel is best.
through Christ, the hope of glory, the greatness and the goodness of God and what he's done for us is far beyond words, is far beyond a song, is far beyond a testimony, but we're called to do those things to carry forth the message of hope. In this world, there are a lot of fearful things right now, things that are pulling at the strings of our fear within us, but we need to fix our eyes on Christ. He is the hope in the midst of these times. He is the hope for tomorrow and the strength for today and bright hopes for tomorrow. And as the hymn says, blessings all mine with 10,000 beside, that our church stands united in the midst of a world that is constantly driving us to be fearful, to be doubting, to be confident in what we think we know. But we need to make sure that that's in Christ and Christ alone. I'm going to read you this passage of scripture, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. This is what it says. Now we have this treasure in jars of clay so that this extraordinary power may be from God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but we're not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry the death of Jesus in our body so that the life of Jesus may also be displayed in our body. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that Jesus' life may also be displayed in our mortal flesh. So then, death is at work in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith in keeping with what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we speak. For we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you. Indeed, everything is for your benefit, so that as grace extends through more and more people, it may cause thanksgiving to increase to the glory of God. That defines the Christian walk. We are those treasures in jars of clay, displaying the goodness and the greatness of God. I know that's convicting for my heart right now. We should all be evaluating and examining what we're doing in our lives that is pointing people to Jesus. And I've been fearful, I've been worried, I've been crazy sometimes. My wife can attest to that. But God, in his grace, God in his goodness, wants us to continue to fix our eyes on him and to know why we're the body of Christ, that the gates of hell won't prevail against the church, especially now. So let's continue to pray. Let's continue to ask God to unify us, to draw us into his presence. These types of testimonies, these types of songs are all a message that points us should point us to Jesus Christ. Fix our eyes up, not in front of us, but fix our eyes up on him. 
So I'm thankful for you guys. I'm thankful for the blessing of my brothers and sisters in Christ that we can gather out here today. It is a blessing. So I'm going to close us in prayer. And I, I, I encourage you to just continue to fellowship. And, and of course, if you need to get back home, you need to get back home. But we're looking forward to hopefully seeing who can make it uh, tomorrow as well as we have our services as well. So let me pray and I'll wrap our night up. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for your love. Your love beyond words. Thank you for your grace beyond the understanding, all the multitude of sins that you have forgiven because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Lord, we don't want to cheapen that. We don't want to abuse that. We want to live in light of that grace. Lord, I pray that our church would grow in the fullness of Christ in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of all of the things going on with our society right now, from this summer into the fall, whatever it leads to, God, that our faith would grow and our fear would diminish in light of your glory and grace. God, we cry out to you. We need you in every moment of every day. And it's not the issue of you being there. It's the issue of us trusting you. So Lord, help us to break down the areas of our control, of being right, of anything that we feel that can block us from understanding how faith takes its root and grows in substance. God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters here today. I thank you that we can be here in your presence and fellowship. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We honor you. Amen. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Thank you for coming out.